number 23 from paper 1 of the 2013 higher maths. Here's the wave function, and it's in paper 1, so there'll be none of that messing about with a calculator then. Well, what have we got? If it's to be written in this form, <coughs> then I'm going to expand this and compare the corresponding terms. So I've got k times whatever that produces. I'll just keep the k out of it just now. So the sign of a difference is the sign of the first, the cos of the second, minus the cos of the first, the sine of the second. Maybe we should put the degrees after each of these. Strictly speaking, it's a bit of a paste. Oh, so that I've got then k cos a of sine x minus, I'm just putting brackets in just to emphasise the coefficient because those are fixed numbers, those are constants, whereas that's a variable, minus k sine a of cos x. And then comparing them term for term, that says that for sine x, I should have a root 3 in front of it. So k cos a must be root 3, so I can write that over here. k cos a equals root 3. And for the cosine term, I should have a negative 1 in front of it. Well, I've got a negative k sine a, so the k sine a must just be the 1. I'll put that on top. k sine a equals 1. Yeah, they're both positive. Right, now I've got to find what k and a is. That's what it said in this part. Find k and a. Well, I'll give them names. You may well not do this, but I do. Pair of simultaneous equations. The way that you eliminate a is by squaring and adding, because sine squared and cos squared makes a 1. But squaring and adding just ends up with k squared equals the 1 squared and the root 3 squared. That's 1 plus 3, which is 4. So k is root 4, which is 2 is greater than zero. I meant to write that. That was the technique for that. The way you can get rid of the k is by dividing these equations. So if I do 1 divided by 2, the k's will cancel out, and I'm left with sin a over cos a. Sin a over cos a will be 1 over root 3. That's the same as the tan of a. The tangent of a will be 1 upon root 3. That's one of the ones you should know. If you don't remember it, you can always draw the triangle. The 30-60 triangle. 30 is the smallest angle. That must be the 1. That's the biggest 2, so that's root 3. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite is opposite 30. <coughs> One's opposite 30, so that would be 30 degrees. Now, it's not a case of is it 30 or the other one, because this condition narrows it down to one of the quadrants, because the sine has to be positive, meaning it's there or there. The cosine has to be positive, meaning it's here or here. So it has to be an angle between 0 and 90. So it's only 30 degrees, not the other option for tangent, which would be 180 plus it. So is 30. Now, part A only asked for K and A. Part B says, what's the maximum value of this? I've just transferred this back up here. This is what this turns into. In part B, it says, what's the maximum value of 4 plus 5 cos x minus 5 root 3 sine x degrees? It's part B. It must be related to part A. You're looking for this to appear somewhere. <clears throat> and you can see them in there. There's the root 3s and so on. There's this 5 that's additional to it. We'll just take the 5 out of it. That's the same as 4 plus 5 times. <clears throat> but notice when you do 5 times it, you're left with cos minus root 3, which is the opposite way around. So that suggests I really want to do 5, take out a factor of minus 5. And then I'll be left with a negative cos x and a plus root 3 sin x, which I'll just rewrite the other way as root 3 sin x minus cos x. Now that I've identified part A within part B, I can replace this with the part you had before. So it's 5 times 2 sine x minus 30 degrees. So that means it comes to 4 minus 10 sine x minus 30 degrees. Now this part just says determine the maximum value of this not where it occurs. So I'm not really going to be bothered too much about this part of it then. Well, quite simply, the maximum value 
will be, you can consider it either way, there's three parts to this. There's the 4, which is fixed, there's the 10, which is fixed, and there's the sine, which is variable. But sine can only go up and down 1. So the only limits you've got to this would be 4 minus 10 times the maximum 1, or 4 minus 10 times the minimum negative 1. Well, it's going to reach its maximum when the sine's at negative 1. It's going to be 4 minus 10 times when the sine's at its minimum, which is negative 1. That will happen when the angle is 270, when this angle x minus 30 is 270, but it doesn't ask for that part. It just says, what's the minimum value? Well, it'll be 4, maximum value, sorry, it'll be 4 plus 10, which is 14. If it asked for the minimum value, it would have been... <coughs> When the sine was at the biggest, it'd be 4 minus 10, which is negative 6. So 14 is the answer. Well, you could just have thought, what's the graph of that look like? You've got a sine, which should look like this. But it's negative 10 sine, so it's upside down with an amplitude of 10. It would have been going down 10 and then up 10. But the whole thing's getting shifted up 4, so you just move that all up 4. So the top moves up to 14, and the negative 10 moves up to negative 6. And of course that axis would be down there somewhere, because it's all been shifted up to 4. Either way around, maximum 14.